Well, when I was a little kid, I was so cold all the time. I was really skinny. I kind of kind of looked like a pasty version of Mahatma Gandhi. I was really, really affected by cold temperatures, and I would. I would shake and shiver, and my mom would always try and bundle me up and uh, try and keep me warm. But I was always cold, and, and uh, we got in recess and and uh, you know play kickball or dodgeball or stuff like that. But and I would get cold, and so I had this theory that uh, I was thinking like a scientist way back then. Can't can't it's in the blood. I uh, I decided that the best way to get warm would be to climb to the top of the monkey bars. Now, back in those days, sort of like a jungle gym, and it was. It was pretty tall. I mean, it, I, it must have been it almost it seemed like a story or two stories tall at that time. I was, just, of course, a little kid, and I'd climb up to the top of the monkey bars, and I thought I'd be warmer up there because I would be closer to the sun. And so, I mean, I don't know. I teacher must thought I was crazy. Here's this little kid climbing to the top of the monkey bars because he's cold, and uh, so that was my that was my theory. So I can remember uh, one day my mom says. We're going to go to the top of Mount Hood and go, uh, and uh, so I want you to go get ready. And I'm like, God, the top of Mount Hood, wow. Now Mount Hood is, you know, she knows about 11,000 feet tall, so it's a pretty tall mountain. So I got ready. I went on and put my swimsuit on. Came downstairs and my mom was looking at this little skinny kid in his swimsuit, sitting there shivering and goes, Mike, we're going to the top of Mount Hood, go get ready. I go, I am ready. See, I figured since we were going to the, to the top of Mount Hood, it would be, it would be warmer because we were closer to the sun. And I, and I told my mom this theory and she just rolled her eyes and shook her head and slapped her forehead and says, oh, I'm raising an idiot child. And uh, she goes, no, 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 no. When you go to the top of Mount Hood, it's actually going to be snowy up there. We're actually going sledding. So I want you to go put on all your warm clothes on. Of course, I thought my mom was crazy, and I did go put on all my warm clothes, but underneath it all, I had my swimsuit. Well, I was so amazed, we did go up to Top Mountain Hood, and it was snowy, and I got to go sledding, and it was, a, I had a great time. But uh, there really is, I didn't understand this uh, a concept about how, our, how air works, and how our atmosphere works, and how it warms us. Um, you have to understand, the atmosphere is really like a blanket, and it likes to hold in heat. And uh, you have to understand that air, even though it doesn't have a definite shape and a definite volume, it does have volume and it does have mass. And I can kind of show you this. Here's a very simple little trick to show you that air does have mass and does have volume. Here we go. I'm going to take an empty plastic bag, a relatively empty plastic bag. Right, put a little air in there. Now, if it didn't, uh, didn't have uh, volume, of course, it wouldn't be able to uh, uh, fill up this uh, bag. And uh, here, I'll, I'll, I'll support a, a mass with it. Oop, whoa, danger, Will Robinson. As you can see, it does even support a mass. So it does have mass and volume. And um, try this. See, our atmosphere, a couple miles thick. Um, when you apply, when you have lots and lots of air piled up, lots and lots of layers piled up, it's sort of like pushing down on your thumb. If you do this, you push down on your thumb, you'll notice that it does get kind of warm. Well, air, as it piles up, it applies pressure. It also holds in heat. And for every thousand feet you, uh, um, you go up, you lose a little bit of like one blanket of air, you might think of it. And as you go up, you lose those blankets, the temperature starts to drop at about 3.5 uh, degrees Fahrenheit uh, per thousand feet. Or if you look at it in metrics, for every thousand feet, or you, uh, thousand meters you go up, you lose about 10 degrees uh, Celsius. And so it gets cooler and cooler as you climb up the mountain because there's less pressure on you and there's less air holding in the heat. There's less less of a blanket over you. And we actually can measure how much air is piled up on top of us. Uh, we call it barometric pressure. This is a barometer. It's one of the basic instruments of weather, and one that we uh, will use a lot in this class. And it actually measures how much air is piled up on top of us. When there's lots and lots of air piled up on top of us, 
we call that high pressure, and that's it. That usually means fair weather. And when there's less and less air piled upon us, that usually means low pressure, and that air is uh, not stable, and usually, at least where we live here in Oregon, that usually means low pressure, usually means that uh, there's stormy weather here, or at least a change in the weather. And uh, just remember, when you climb up the mountain, it gets colder every, every, every time you go up another thousand feet. And, uh, and of course, you probably want to wear warm clothes, okay? And uh, even though you are close to the sun, it is colder. <laughs>